Africa is set to be the second fastest growing economic region in the world, with 4% growth forecast this year. That's according to the International Monetary Fund, IMF. Now, while that sounds like good news, it's not guaranteed. African countries are still suffering the effects of the COVID pandemic, Russia's war in Ukraine, and the Israel-Hamas conflict. And let's not forget issues like climate change, increased food insecurity, and political instability creating further challenges. Even Africa's largest economy, Nigeria, has not been spared from high inflation. Our correspondent, Olisa Chukuma in Lagos, Nigeria, went to find out how people are struggling with the high cost of living. This is Oibo Market, a popular food market in Lagos, Nigeria. Just a year ago, I could buy all these items for 10,000 Naira. That's about $10. This year, the same amount can only get me this much. It's not only food prices that are skyrocketing. The cost of other basics like transportation, fuel and housing have also shot up. Many Nigerians say the situation seems to be getting worse by the day. This is the season of tomatoes. We have to buy a basket, maximum of 6,000 Naira. Go and ask people, it's now 35,000. Please, how do we cope? The, some of the items you can get at the cost of 200 Naira, now is 500 Naira. Everything is at a 500% increase. I wouldn't even say 100% increase. One reason why inflation is so bad in Nigeria is because of the local currency has continued to lose value at an unprecedented rate. This time last year, one dollar could get approximately 500 naira. Just a year later, one dollar equals 1,000 naira. The rapid devaluation of the naira is unprecedented here. And as Nigeria imports most of its goods, the cost of living has shot up. With people's earnings remaining the same, it has become even more difficult for many Nigerians to make ends meet. In times of food, I have two kids. And in times of it's very, very hard. Very, very hard. It's because everything is cost. I'm working harder in my business because the thing is even affecting me. Because not that it is before, it's how it be right now. Experts project that Nigeria's economy will be more stable this year. But for many on these streets, it's hard to see hope at the end of the road. It's a similar situation in Ghana, a country once seen as a model of African development. To put things into perspective, the economy grew by 8% in 2019, making it one of the fastest growing economies in the world. Fast forward to 2022, Ghana's currency, the city, plunged against the dollar and inflation shot to record highs above 50%. The resulting economic crisis forced Ghana to seek financial aid from the International Monetary Fund. Now, as the government battles the sky-high cost of living, some communities are trying to stay afloat financially. They are putting a fresh spin on traditional saving schemes. Maxwell Souk reports from Northern Ghana. Here, miles away from the capitals, rural women have developed a way to deal with economic hardships. It starts with this little box. In the northern village of Limo, this group of 30 women has formed a cooperative to save money among themselves. Every week, the women bring whatever money each can spare and put it into the box. The amounts are carefully recorded. Members can borrow the money to finance their business projects or other needs. Then they pay back the loan with a little interest and the fund grows. No interest is charged on loans for school fees or hospital bills. Whenever I am in a difficult situation or I want to do business, I come to borrow from this box. If it's for business, I will pay it back gradually with my profits until I pay off the debt. Then, in the end, the business totally belongs to me. To ensure accountability, the group set up their own rules. The box is cured with three padlocks, and the keys are given to three different members. When anyone comes forward to borrow money, all members must be consulted. The box is nicknamed Sankura, meaning all debt 
because one has to pay off their old debt before borrowing again. An NGO called Trade Line Consult is teaching the women financial literacy and helps them to ensure everyone benefits fairly. Savings like this becomes a better coping mechanism in, in, in the midst of this hardship because they can always rely on the savings that they've done by the group and then they can share out the monies that um, they've saved. Many rural families have no collateral to get loans from the banks. This system is putting the women on the path to financial resilience. Thanks to the savings box, Azara Abdul Rahman now has her own business, making and selling share butter. I borrow money from the savings box to pay my children's school fees, then I pay back the loan after making sales, which helps to sustain my butter business. Village savings initiatives are not new in Africa, but Ghana's current economic wars means schemes like the Sankral Box are becoming ever more relevant. We'll be speaking to the man responsible for managing Ghana's economy in a moment. But before that, let's find out what some people in Ghana think about the state of the economy and their finance minister. In my perspective, he has not, he is not on top of his job because the inflation is too much. Inflation is too much. It's getting worse and it's not getting better at all. Well, he has not improved one, the prices of goods and services. He hasn't done it in such a way that the prices of goods and services have been reduced. Although he was able to stabilize the Ghana cities for some time. The country is owing and then getting it better will be, it will not get well at all. It's very difficult for the finance minister to improve at this point. Now since the dollar rate has reduced, why don't we also reduce the the prices to make the cost of living for the citizens of Ghana to what be, uh, be stable and they'll be able to what enjoy it. He has to really tackle that so that things will be stable for Ghana. Let's now welcome Ghana's Minister for Finance and Economic Planning, Ken Oforiata, to the program. He was listening in from the World Economic Forum in Davos. Hello and welcome to the program, sir. We just heard some Ghanaians saying they are still suffering from a high cost of living. You recently said Ghana's economy is right. getting back on track. So why are people not feeling that mm -hmm. in their pocket? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's no question that um, we've been through some very difficult um, circumstances and the headwinds are still there. But as one of the uh, respondents mentioned, you know, we really hit a low of 54% um, inflation at the end of 2022 and also the currency you know plummeted um, to 50 percent um, during that period um, but this is really sort of coming on the back of an economy um, that was uh, pretty strong of inflation in single digits or so but what we've been able to do this year as we look to tackle it um, is as you can see inflation has come down to um, 23.2 percent. So as the gentleman said, and that's the issue of trying to tackle uh, mm -hmm. prices. And then we also saw um, the currency depreciate by 50 percent. Uh, and this year since February, um, uh, one of the gentlemen also said so um, that the currency has been strengthening. Right. So right. we've been able to tackle the issue of prices. We'll, we'll continue to do that and keep the currency stable. Uh, and make sure there's foreign exchange uh, mm -hmm. for us to continue. But uh, we have seen uh, very strong resilience because the IMF predicted a 1.5% growth and we've mm -hmm. been able to chalk almost a 3.2% growth. Of course, you're going to the IMF seeking overall that $3 billion. That's increasing Ghana's debt, isn't it? Because now we have a debt of at least $50 billion. Isn't the growing debt a major concern to the country's economic recovery? Um, the question um, really um, that we have asked that through um, this restructuring um, um, transaction that we have done, uh, we basically are reducing our debt um, portfolio. 
We also, uh, in these negotiations, uh, have agreed um, to gradually bring Ghana's debt down to 55%. So this is much um, cheaper debt restructuring to cut um, some of the debt off and then get to a position of about 55% debt to um, GDP ratio, uh, which is good for us. So it's a program okay. of debt restructuring that would enable us to get to a sustainable level. Mm. You see, uh, at the end of the day, I'm sure your work uh, entails that you do all you can to make sure that Ghanaians are not feeling the pinch as much, you know, to cushion the effect of, of, of the uh, financial, you know, crunch or economic meltdown, so to speak. So what is yeah. your message to Ghanaians who are still struggling to see light at the end of the tunnel? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think, you know, even in this program, um, Eddie, we, we did well to ensure that our support to the livelihood empowerment program um, is literally doubled. We also made sure that capitation and school feeding um, went up. I think one of the key issue areas of intervention is really food and agriculture. And you can see that even with food inflation that is coming down and we need to stop importing. Um, and therefore the economic enclaves that we are putting together so that we can become um, secure in the areas of rice and maize, etc. And I think the new agriculture minister is working hard at that. So that's key, getting our agricultural productivity in place and then moving on um, to value add so that we import less. Mm. I think once we, we grow uh, and eat what we grow as a nation, um, we will be able to then control um, these mm. escalating prices. Okay. In the interim, we are going to do our best to make sure that uh, prices are contained as inflation goes down, as we are all witness. Mm. Uh, which is fair enough. Uh, from, for, again, many Ghanaians watching now, when you say you're going to try to get it down to make uh, the cost of living more bearable, what time frame should Ghanaians be looking at? Because yeah. it's easier said than done, obviously. Uh, they're still feeling the pinch. What's your well, message to allay I think, those fears? I think, the I think the beauty of what we have is that we are all uh, witnesses um, to the work we are doing um, to get inflation down. So moving from 54% to 23.2, our target is that by the end of the year, it will be 15%. And then the following year, uh, we come to the eight plus or minus two, uh, which we were on course with um, before the COVID issues. Um, so yes, um, I think the proof is in what we have done already and the target uh, 15, uh, I believe we'll be able to achieve that and also stabilize the currency, uh, which is also evident to everyone. So yes, okay. very difficult um, situation, um, but I think we are all um, witness to the right direction in which we are moving. Okay. Ken Furiata, Ghana's Minister for Finance and Economic Planning. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Thank you. Really appreciate this.